Well, here we are again for a Devo today. And I so enjoy each one of these. Uh, personally, uh, it's encouraging and edifying. And then your feedback, uh, both on Facebook and uh, Instagram and uh, on YouTube, and all that feedback that we get is so encouraging to us uh, here at Devo today as we're uh, putting these things together. It's just, it's just a wonderful thing. So I want to encourage you, please, you know, let us know what God's doing in your life. Uh, we'll be blessed to pray for you and uh, kind of know what's, what's going on. So this is out of uh, Leviticus chapter 16, verse 20. And when he has made an end of atoning for the holy place, the tabernacle of meeting and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. So there were two goats involved in this process. One is the goat of sacrifice, where the sin of the people and the nation are transferred. They lay hands on this one goat and transfer the sin. This is, um, you know, kind of a metaphorical idea. Like they're they're saying this, you know, and and praying over this and transferring the sin. But this is in again a representation of Jesus for us is both the offering goat that was sacrificed and also. Look at this, the scapegoat. Let's read. We're going to read about the scapegoat. We kind of know what happens to the offering goat, right? But anyhow, he says, Aaron shall lay both his hands on the head of the live goat, confess over it all the iniquities of the children of Israel and and all the transgressions concerning all their sins, putting them on the head of the goat and shall send it away into the wilderness by the hand of of a uh, suitable man. So they kind of release it, take it out into the wilderness, and then the goat shall bear on itself all the iniquities of the, uh, to an uninhabited land, and he shall uh, re- release the goat in the wilderness. So they would even have spotters watching this from the hilltops uh, and watching this goat as it left and it was gone. Look, this is the thing. And this is a simple truth for you and me, but what God has done for us in the forgiveness of our sin. This is this big illustration, word picture painted. This one goat dies, takes the sin, you know, then then it's then this alive one, the sin is transferred to it, but then that one's released. Well, why would one live and one die? Well, because it's showing us in, in a word picture, it's showing us what Jesus has done for us by taking all of his sin upon, on, upon our sin, upon not his sin, our sin upon himself, taking all of that and taking it to the cross, putting it to death. But then he resurrected and was alive. Now, what happened to that sin? What is said of in the Bible that your sin, my sin is cast as far as the east is from the west. I love that illustration. Or into the deepest depths of the ocean. It's, it, it's completely gone what has happened for us. And this is showing it being released into a, a, the wilderness, never to be seen, never to be heard of. Look, Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He is the only one that reminds us of our sin and failure. As far as God is concerned, positionally for you and for me, we are forgiven. And it is forgotten on God's end. It's reminded to us by the enemy. It gets in our minds. We remember sometimes our failures and stuff, but God does not. He has the capacity to not only forgive, but also to forget. What a truth and what a blessing. This east and west, the reason I like that, that our sin is as far as the east is from the west, is because it's an immeasurable chasing distance. You can never catch up to it. God loves you that much, and you are set free, liberated. Enjoy your freedom in Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a great day today.